Welcome to Insight Builder channel, large language model automators, Python experts and my dear friends. Wavy8 explained, understanding schema and querying inside Wavy8. Optimize schema and querying for improved results. The challenge solved, data retrieval. Wavy8 schema creation is very much similar to how we create schema or tables inside RDBMS databases. So if you are aware of PostgreSQL, if you are aware of PySpark, Spark SQL, etc., we always have to create a schema before we start loading the data into the table. So the same way in Wavy8 also we create schema. In uh, Wavy8 there is an additional uh, you know, advantage, the, something called as auto schema, which we will not be you know, using, but I will be showing you that how you Wavy8 creates the schema automatically for us. That is also possible, but we have to always use uh, the understand the schema how it is getting created and we have to manually create it in that way we will have better control loading data is taken care by add data object and retrieving data is taken care by query dot get object this query dot get object has you can chain multiple other methods like using the nearest by text and nearest by vectors and also you can have multiple filtering and aggregation methods also this particular video is going to discuss about those methods and how to use them in detail. The workflow. What we are going to do is in, in this particular video, we will be using the docker compose method that is available and pull the Waviate instance to your local, local environment. That is if you are having Linux or if you are using Windows, you can pull the docker instance of Waviate and start working with that instance. There are plenty of advantages when you are going to work with such an instance so you will, we will see that also we will initiate the client and work with hugging face configurations we will create the schema and we will we will create a couple of schemas in this video so be ready for a little bit longer video we will create after we create the schema we load the data and then we will work on the retrieval processes all these things that we are going to discuss has a couple of advantages First and foremost, you once you start creating schema, you will see that it is very much similar to how the schema is getting created in PySpark tables or Spark tables. In Spark, also you have to you can infer the schema and then you can use that schema to create tables. So in the same way, you can the same kind of a process is used inside uh, Wavy8 also. Default vector in Wavy8 is HNSW. So there is no other vector available at this moment in Wavy8. So only the support vector is HNSW. This is something that you have to be aware. The other vector stores like FIES support other vectors like IVF, flat vector, etc. Okay, just for your you know information. Practicing aggregation and filtering concepts can help us in saving a lot of tokens when you are going to use the results in the large language models. Yes, when we are going to use work with uh, the libraries like Langchain, work with uh, various uh, like TXT AI, what happens is those libraries have inbuilt uh, methods that can retrieve the documents from vector stores like Wavy8 and send it to the large language models. However, they have uh, they have limited control. But if you want to have better control on what data is getting sent to large language models, it's better that we control it at the vector store itself. And Wav8 works efficiently for that particular process. We'll be seeing the code right now. So get ready for practicing. I hope that you like this content. Do leave a like and share it to the others. And most importantly, subscribe to my channel for further updates on Wav8 as well as other related libraries like TXT AI, Unstructured, Langchain. So I cover all this uh, libraries that, that forms an ecosystem around uh, the large language models, artificial intelligence, automation, etc. If you are completely new to artificial intelligence and language model uh, automation, then I would suggest that take a look at this particular playlist where I update all the related videos regarding open source models and how to work with various tasks that you might want to do with uh, artificial intelligence models. So this particular playlist will be very helpful for you guys. With that said, I would like to go to the code that I already shared I uh, shared in the presentation. So this code will, is already inside the, the inside the GitHub repo and uh, will be shared. The link will be shared with you in the description below in the YouTube uh, channel. The now next step is that we have to start working on the code directly. 
this particular notebook will have a couple of additional information also because the the notebook uh, is kind of a notes that i have also taken so whatever i research about the library i put it in a presentation also and i put it in the notebook too so that you guys also can refer to it okay the objective that is where we start right so to understand how schema and querying works in wavy but what is schema inside the uh, scheme uh, wavy you can define the schema the schema starts with the classes each class has a property and has a data type has links if there is going to be link between the classes and finally there is a vectorizer module so these four things are going to comprise of a class and this class is what is going to create the schema i mean the table uh, uh, table uh, skeleton so if you if you can you know visualize it the reason why I have pulled the Langchain modules here is that I am using these modules for working with uh, splitting the text so that it will be easier for me. You can do it manually also. But yeah, recursive character text splitter has been very helpful in splitting the text in a re repetitive fashion. So that's why I am using it. Okay, this is some one of the important point I wanted to add. Uh, before I proceed further, just give me a moment. In Viviate, uh, if you go to the Viviate website, you will see that uh, there is a link for Docker Composing. And this Docker Compose version provides you a lot of, uh, lot of configurations uh, to you guys. So whenever you can look at this configuration and whichever configuration it fits to you, you can download it. They have a lot of configuration available. The point here is that before we actually go into any complex configuration, we need to start with the most simplest configuration possible. Okay, so what I am doing here is that I am taking, okay, let me actually tell you what is complex configuration before going to simplest configuration. So here you see that this, this is actually a code that is taken from docker compose.yaml file. Okay, this docker compose.yaml file will pull the image from semi technologies, the VB8 image it will pull and it will start the server for you guys and when it starts the server it attaches all these environmental variables and starts it right all this all these parameters provided here are important for an example the persistent data path will enable you to persist the data or the classes that you are going to create in this particular instance it will help you to do that second the default vectorizer module so if there is a module that you are going to there will be multiple modules you can pull into this uh, in into this viviate instance i am not going to touch it right now so i will be discussing that in the future videos so in this you can pull in multiple modules and out of the module you can enable one of the modules so you might be wondering uh, kamal there is no default vectorizer module so will this instance work it will st still work because what will happen is the default vectorizer module is not there but when i am going to initiate the schema i will tell which module to use so that is the next step that comes into picture and then we create the cluster hostname so vv8 is ready i mean it is built with the idea of being production ready so i have been telling this in the other videos also so vv8 can work with multiple clusters so it can be spread across multiple clusters and you can name those clusters what happens is that once you name those clusters, you can connect them all. So the point here is that it's not just VV8 is capable of uh, this kind of cluster arrangement. Phi is also is capable of that. But uh, that is a separate topic. But I just want to you know highlight you that there are other uh, vector stores out there which can also do this same thing, but in a different, a little complex fashion. But Phi is uh, sorry, VV8 does it in a very simplest fashion possible okay so that is all secondary now we have uh, if you actually put this uh, put this code inside docker dot docker uh, compose yaml file and you uh, you use the command docker compose up in that same folder what will happen is this particular image will get pulled into your local environment it is around 60 mb image it's not very big so you can go ahead and pull it and then you will have the web up and running in no time so this is one of the best things that i actually came across and i wanted you guys to try it out because this is going to give a different kind of a control for you guys 
the in the first video that i uh, let me go back to this so the first video that i discussed about uh, wav8 i talk about the embedded instance that is the local instance of this particular execution environment that is also useful but working with uh, the actual uh, working with the actual uh, uh, server the wav8 server is much better than working with local environment and after you uh, get uh, after you got the wav8 up and running you have to start the client here and uh, when you start the client when you make the uh, client in the python environment you need to provide the proper configuration so here i am providing the hugging face api read key so this key don't worry about it i will be removing this key from my server so this is just a reference for you guys so hugging face read key should be used here why i am using this i will be explaining it in a couple of minutes after that what i am first planning to do is i want to show you guys how to work with schema how to create schema how to uh, how to then load the data load the data anyway i have shown it already but i just want to tell what are the parts of the schema and how to work with it that's my first objective so schema is defined uh, by schema level settings so you need to provide the the properties you need to provide the graph links as i already explained above and the vectorizer module how to do this so uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to a schema the first thing that we need to learn is that schema is like a collection okay each schema is uh, if you are from the pinecone or if you are from the chroma db uh, zone then you need to think class in wav8 as a collection in the regular parlance and each collection is a separate vector search domain so you need to refer the domain that you are going to search using the class name only so there are certain rules you need to follow when you create the class name so the first letter of the class should be capital i tried using using small i mean uh, lower case letter it did not work so ensure it is capital and uh, then you can start working uh, on loading the data these are all couple of links that i am referring inside the v8 uh, website for uh, you know making these videos and trying to understand uh, the things better so the next i'll be also making separate videos on modules and indexes to understand uh, the the capability of uh, making wav8 uh, i mean adding more features or uh, uh, the adding better solutions to wav8 uh, data stores now the first schema that you are going to make is called as a paragraph so this is going to be a very simple schema this is going to take lines of uh, text and it is going to encode and it is going to use sentence transformer so this is the same same model that i used in my first video so that is nothing much different but one thing with respect to first video and this is now we know that we need to give the class we need to give the properties and then we need to give the vectorizer so this is these are the three uh, elements that we need to provide okay so class is the topmost uh, topmost uh, element in the schema inside the topmost element the first element the first key is actually class below that is a description so this description is like the description that we give to a table so you can think like that and inside the inside the class we can provide the details of the uh, the tokenizer also if you don't provide this for an example if you create the module if you don't give this module config in uh, the schema what will happen is i will show in the next schema that i create hugging face uh, sorry wav8 will automatically uh, populate this it you will it will not actually you know throw an error telling that this particular data is missing it will automatically populate but if you want to control it then it is better that you provide this and you will see why it is important because if you let it automatically populated then the model that is used here will be also automatically populated and the uh, and uh, the basic model i mean the default model you need to refer to the documentation the default model will get populated this this is the thing that you want to understand when it comes to basic schema and whenever you are going to query so i will show you how to query the uh, query the vector store also when you you are going to query the content uh, i mean in let us take the example of regular database so whenever you are going to query the regular database what we will do we will say select the column names so column 1 column 2 column 3 from table 1 limit equal to 5 this is how you will create 
this is how you will query the table in the same way when you are going to query the vector store you are going to say okay from uh, uh, i am going to say that okay i need the column the column name is content and i need the rows that are matching to a particular vector so that is how you are going to select inside the vector store so you will see this in action in a couple of minutes so once you create this uh, schema all you need to do is create schema by using client.schema.create the uh, the schema will get created i mean the collection collection called paragraph will get created once you create the collection adding the collection to the uh, to the adding the data to the collection is a pretty straightforward process but one thing that you need to always remember is that whatever name you are giving here this is the column name so keep that in mind so the names here are like the column names inside your rdbms you know trying to have an analogy is much easier for us to learn that is how i learned uh, about vaviate really fast so that's why i'm now sharing it with you guys also and that is how i attach the each of the rows so mail docs contains many elements almost 50 elements you see that here and each element will be assigned or you know will go under the column called content inside the collection called paragraph or class called paragraph okay how do i know all these things i will explain to you in a moment so before that i just want to show you that you can move this entire uh, loop into a into a class definition and you can modularize it in that way whenever you want to use different class names with different doc list it's matter of you know calling the class name and the doc list it will happen automatically or else you will have to do this again and again so i don't want that to happen that is one thing that i have done here this is where i told that uh, the get class so let us go back to the presentation for a moment yeah i think i need to zoom in a bit i hope that you guys are okay anyway you guys can look at the uh, uh, look at the actual code also uh, i have just gone through the entire process that is the code will be shared with you guys uh, one suggestion that i always provide for uh, for the viewers is that you when the video is uh, when you are watching the video in parallel start practicing uh, with the jupyter notebook it will be little uh, disorienting in the beginning because you have to concentrate on multiple things you can pause the video in the middle so you can watch for 5 minutes do some changes and practice in uh, in the jupyter notebook and then you can come back so in this way if you go back and forth you will understand a lot of things really fast with that said let me further move into the uh, step let us go to the pdf the point i was trying to make here is that you need to pull using the docker compose and start the instance initiate the client with hugging face configs and create the schema so we have done all these things now we need to we need to also think about how to we have done the add object add data object so this is something that we have done now we need to query and get the object this is the step that we are going to start let us move to the browser again and to the jupyter notebook here we see that i am calling the uh, get method so client dot data dot get method and i am using limit equal to 50 so why i am using limit equal to 50 the reason is if you don't use any kind of limit so i am not using any kind of limit i am removing this entire options okay and if i just call the client what will happen is it will return some objects so there is no any any idea how much object it will it will return so in my case it is returning 25 objects so the point is that this particular class whichever i have already loaded here has more than 50 objects it has exactly 50 objects so that's why i wanted to make this uh, limit mention the limit here so i will get 50 objects output so you see once i do this i will get 50 object output and this width vector will actually let me to take the look at the vector also so let me show you that because uh, that will be easier for you guys i have anyway done that at the, at the below the below in the same notebook but i will do it here uh, it's not an issue i am going to call one and i am going to say vector equal to true and i am going to execute so you will immediately see that the class is paragraph and i am getting the vector here you see this vector so this is what i was talking about when you say width equal to true and you will get the entire vector also we will be using this concept in uh, going forward when we do some uh, querying 
and you see the content here so this is the content that we uploaded there if i don't give this option so if i say with vector equal to false or if i by default it is false if i execute this you will say vector weights equal to none so this is something that you guys have to understand and how this works and if i say class name so this is also one of the things that you need to realize i have other classes in this uh, particular uh, uh, vv8 instance so i can use that so if i say vim i think it is vim underscore texts just a minute let me check that out uh, paragraph yeah vim underscore texts and uh, let me execute that okay yeah that is an error that i am always making you will see that this is coming from the table or the collection vim underscore text and this is completely different from what we are doing from the collection uh, paragraph so this is something that you have to understand what is going on got it so i hope that you are getting a hang of the get method right now you need to practice this with a couple of collections uh, so in order to make another collection what you are going to do is uh, so uh, this things will come back a little later so i have to create the second collection so in order to create the second collection i am going to again create the class the description the properties and the vectorizer what is different here so let us go to the top okay let us take this let us take this uh, entire schema 2 and let us go to the top you need to understand the difference for uh, you know properly so you see this is pretty long uh, the schema there uh, that i was using so let me paste it directly here so this schema looks pretty small compact also right but this schema has got a lot of information what happened to this module config what happens to this text uh, to vector hugging face uh, parameters as i was telling you if you don't give this information there is something called as auto schema in uh, in vv8 it will take over and fill all this information for you but only difference is that it will do it in a default fashion so you cannot control it so it is always better that you control it by yourself but i am going to show you without any control right this is something that i wanted to share it with you guys so what i am going to do is let us go down and uh, i have already okay here you see the top level element is class but there the top level element is classes the the reason why it is different is that whenever you create a schema the schema goes under various classes okay so you need to first create a class so what we can do is once you create this just a moment once you create this schema you can use something called as create class method and you can create a class which will register the class directly to the vv8 instance vv8 database after that it is the same process after that you can uh, uh, send the documents into the uh, into the collection or the class and then as usual you can start querying so you can actually use langchain's vv8 uh, uh, instance also so this is langchain's vv8 instance do not get confused so this is there only for you for uh, uh, for uh, example just a minute Langchain Vaviat object. So you can do a similarity search there also. The reason why I am showing this here is that by default, as I was explaining, uh, let me go to the PDF again. The reason why I am explaining is that I was explaining that in in case of uh, practicing the filtering concepts, we can save the token usage, correct? So the reason why I am explaining the Vaviat object uh, from uh, Vaviat object from Langchain is that by default the similarity search in inside the Langchain will return four uh, it will return four documents by default. So we can actually control this four documents by changing this value. So you can use k equal to five, six, whatever number you want. However. Think about it. If you want to reduce the uh, number of uh, uh, number of documents, you cannot just like that reduce the number. You have to reduce it in a proper logic. So that is where the logic of filtering, the logic of you know searching the appropriate text comes into picture. That is the reason why I wanted to introduce this uh, Langchain primitive here. Anyway, I hope that you understand uh, the overall picture. Now, so we have seen that how the schema works. So we have played with it a bit. We will be playing a little more also down below. Uh, you have uh, seen how to create multiple classes. 
and how to play with those classes using the get method here how to work with various parameters inside this you have seen how to look at the vector of each of the uh, or each of the element that has been sent into the vbiet so you have you have understood the inter internal workings of uh, the vbiet uh, class now we are going to query so already you saw that uh, this particular step already so i showed it to you second method is before i go further down into this i am going to use one more file called as space shorten so this particular csv file has multiple columns and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new schema called space parrot the class name will be space parrot and it will hold three properties the properties are going to be id passenger id home planet and info so these are like columns as i was explaining right these are all like columns and once i create this schema i am going to create a class with the schema and then uh, i am i'll be using uh, the regular split method inside uh, python and uh, i'll be adding the data into the adding the data into the vector store so this is the process that i am following so you see this this is the i was telling right these are all like column names so passenger id home planet and info so the name that i am providing here should be provided in this place as i input the data and once i input this data into the properties it will be automatically added and vectorized by the vbiet instance and stored again when i am going to create these properties i did not tell to the Uh, schema or to the vbiet instance that what sentence transformer or what model to use for vectorizing so it will use the automatic model keep please keep that in mind if you want to change the model you have to manually enter the information coming back to the topic at hand so what has happened is the reason why i wanted to uh, wanted to uh, um, create a new uh, class is that i want to show how to work with multiple uh, properties that is columns let us make it columns that is much more easier to you know discuss so whenever i say columns it means the properties here once i add using add data object i can simply use something called as nearest text <clears throat> uh, the nearest text is a dictionary which uh, to which i can send multiple lists like i can give a concept of trappist <coughs> excuse me and then i can ask the uh, vbiet instance to get back the result that is nearest so i am going to ask me to provide me uh, two results that is nearest to this concept called trappist and i want it to return all the three columns so this is the result i am going to get once i execute this and you will see that i am getting all the three columns so i am getting the home planet i am getting the info and i am getting the passenger id so the same way i am getting two values here i hope that you can see the difference here now assume that i change this okay i change this to vim texts what do you think will happen there will be no concept of trappist inside vim text and i shouldn't be getting any result so let us check it out so i am going to execute this because i have changed the class here let us see what is the result i get okay so what i get is that first and foremost i am saying uh, it is saying that there is no home planet passenger id or info uh, field inside the inside this particular collection that is correct right there is actually no such a data so i cannot use that here so i have to use content let us go and give content now again let us execute and let us see what is the output that we get so here we see something is coming out that is something we did not expect so we see that the two nearest uh, information is coming one is split the working win window into multiple window by splitting vertically and output of any config files in current doc you might be wondering okay how come this trappist and any of these two uh, like sentences are uh, close actually vector uh, vector search works in a, a different way so this particular sentence these two sentences were some way mathematically close to this concept of trappist okay that is how these two uh, data came out so it is not exactly going to check whether trappist this word is inside the lines that is not how it works it purely works at the semantic level and it only checks the mathematical distance so if you are not aware of these concept of mathematical distance do take a look at the wikipedia and try to understand how the vector search is being done to you know understand it deeply so this is something i want you guys to be aware of 
and you i want you guys also to do some research so i have covered some of the challenges and some of the mistakes that you might encounter and how to recover from those mistakes right next is uh, there is something called as certainty this is where we can actually test that so we can tell how certain the results are so if i execute this you will get an additional information here called as certainty and i am getting almost 93.93.4 percent so let us do the same thing here and let us see what is the certainty we get so we say with additional and uh, we say uh, certainty in this way you can understand what is going on also let us again execute this and let us check the result and you will see okay the certainty is still high the the certainty for uh, the first uh, topic is telling almost 92.8 and the second second uh, topic is also almost 92.87 it doesn't make sense right this is the challenge when it comes to natural language processing and also when such a result uh, is actually sent to the large language model think about it large language model does not actually know or care what the particular sentence or uh, the data is inside the document all it cares is that the particular vector store return me the uh, set of documents which contained the text and i am reading it and giving you the answer but you need to understand what documents these vector stores are sending to the large language models in the first place so this is what i am you know trying to explain to you with this uh, with uh, this particular uh, discussion so we saw how with additional certainty works and uh, now what we are going to do is this is going to be interesting here you saw that there is something called as uh, with near text method same way there is something called as with near vector also for uh, working with near vector what i am going to do is i am going to take space for our class and i am going to limit i am going to take the first element inside this space for our class and i am going to get the vector so this is the vector that i that you will see it's a long vector it's almost 768 elements inside this vector so uh, i am what i am going to do is i am going to copy this vector and i am going to use that inside the with near object so with near method so the same vector i am going to put it inside here and uh, i am going to execute the uh, execute this uh, cell it's a, it's a long uh, you, you can actually try to modify a couple of vectors and see what happens yeah don't reduce the number of vectors the vectors has to be 768 in uh, 768 elements total or else it will not work and you will see that the i am getting two results that is close so i am getting uh, home planet europa that is close and i am getting two more results and you you will be wondering okay uh, where is the passenger id so let us go up the reason the passenger id is not visible is because i did not call it so just give me a moment sorry about that and uh, where it is so yeah here it is so you see that i did not call the passenger id now let me add the passenger id okay so let me do that in a minute passenger id and let me execute that and the result is out let me go down sorry about scrolling up and down because it's jupyter notebook you you can't help it and yeah here is the output let me see the output you see the passenger id here so there are two passenger ids the first passenger id anyway that is the id that i took the vector from so that is expected to be close but you see there is one more passenger id also which is coming close and uh, that is uh, the passenger id 8 underscore uh, 0 2 and you'll see there are lots of things uh, you know close so both the passengers are uh, going to trappist this is false and this is this is true and this is false but they are going to they are in the b cabin in uh, uh, in uh, cabin one so and they are in zero so they are almost very close close to each other in semantically also so you see how vector near vector is uh, giving the almost close data and uh, yeah that is something that i wanted to share with you guys and next comes the filter when you are going to use filter you need to provide the path that is the column that you are going to use the filter upon you need to say the operator so the operator i'm going to use is equal and i'm going to say earth and once you do that uh, once you place this uh, filter here with where method and you give the filter filter element here 
you will immediately get the only the results with respect to earth rest of the home planets will not come here this is something that i want uh, this is uh, how filtering works filtering is you know straightforward process and if you are going to use integer you, need, you can use greater than and less than also here i am using uh, the string method so i am using equal to i cannot use any other option so i am using that let me see whether i can use not equal and see what happens okay because uh, that is something that we can experiment right and you need to break the example always i say that so you need to break the example and see what happens and you will see that okay first and foremost we see that uh, the has an invalid value okay why it is saying invalid value most probably it is because that i used the wrong use the wrong uh, phrase here operator here so let me check that out again and let me see the result okay now you see that so you saw i did not know that what operator to use in the first place to be honest with you so i actually intuitively thought okay if uh, equal is going to get me equal data then not equal should give me the not equal data correct so that is how i decided and i tried to update the example but i found not equal with small n is not going to work let me use big n i mean uppercase n then i found okay the result is working so this is one of the uh, you know uh, the easiest ways i have found to learn uh, programming or uh, learn new technologies uh, most of the time it is about intuition you have learned something already you have to transfer that learning to the new technology so i have learned pyspark i have learned python i have learned various uh, rdbms uh, uh, schema creation processes so it should be similar right uh, the technology the guys who are uh, writing the technology new technology are going to refer to the old technology so keep this you know principle in your mind whenever you are turning uh, whenever you are learning new technologies after all the large language models and the uh, transformer models do uh, use transfer transfer learning so why not we use it so this is one of the ways i use it so you see that none of the earth related uh, uh, passengers are earth related home planet is coming here okay now going forward coming to the aggregation so aggregation works with the entire collection so you need to give the class name or the collection and then you need to tell what is the aggregation you are going to do and i'm going to say i'm going to do a count so i'm going to get 17 there is only 17 elements in space fairer because i have kept the data to the minimum because we are experimenting right so i have kept the data to the minimum and then you can use filters along with the space fairer also so if i do a filter uh, with the where filter right now you see the count is 8 so if i go and change the where filter to again if i am going to say equal to earth and then i come here and i change the uh, check the count you see the count is 9 here that is because the result is different now this is uh, something that i wanted you guys to understand from aviate and it is one of the after txt ai txt ai has also got a very similar kind of a setup but txt ai goes further and creates a sql select option itself so there is a separate video that i discuss about uh, txt ai uh, txt ai's uh, sql capabilities that is a different level altogether uh, you can literally type sql queries inside the search uh, search option and you can get the output that is already inside the collection but here you have you still have to create the schema you have to create the process you have to go through the uh, methods etc but yeah as i was telling everybody has a different way of solving the problem but at the end of the day the problem that is getting solved here is data ret retrieval and you saw how effectively the methods the get method along with various uh, additional methods like nearest by text and vectors the aggregation and filtering help to get the data retrieved from the Waviate classes or collections so with that we come to the end of this particular video i hope that you like this video do share it with others and subscribe to my channel for further updates on not just Waviate but various other uh, vector stores, uh, Python libraries, the ecosystem surrounding large language models and AI models. So stay tuned for next videos. Till then, I would like to leave the video with four words. That is practice, 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 practice. See you guys. Have a great time.